Hey, my name is Rowan Smith, and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare, and conquer your upcoming hike, trek, or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude, and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable, and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. All right, hello, hello, guys. Today, I'm talking through an incredibly, incredibly important pain reduction technique for hikers. And this is specifically relevant for those who deal with a bit of chronic pain, as in they're struggling with some type of foot, shin, knee, back, shoulder pain, whatever, but they're struggling with it over the long term. Now, this is a super relevant technique for anyone in that situation who has been struggling for a while and they do occasionally get flare-ups of pain or flare-ups of discomfort or whatever it may be. And I know this is a lot of hikers out there who do struggle with these types of things and this is a lot of the work that I specifically do with hikers. And I know this one particular technique, it may not sound like much at first, but it can make a dramatic difference to the presentation of pain to your confidence to continue on training and generally just your speed and pro, um, your happiness over this sort of long-term pain reduction journey. So if you are a hiker who struggles with pain and if you do have a flare-up, so if you have a flare-up of pain in the feet, in the shins, in the knees, in the um, back or whatever it may be, this is what I want you to do. Don't freak out. Now, this is such a an important point to make, and it is incredibly difficult to do when you do have a flare-up, but it is so, so important. The reason this is important is essentially when we have an issue and we freak out, we get scared, we get worried, we get anxious, and all these bad emotions start building up, that can actually make the issue a little bit worse. Now, not in the sense that it's going to damage your muscles or damage, cause extra damage or anything like that. But what it can do is affect our um, affect our perception of pain, meaning if we're really anxious, if we're really scared, if we're really worried about this thing, we keep on thinking about it, it can basically tell our body to keep on sending more pain signals to us and amplify the pain signal so it feels worse and worse. Now, that's a really, really dumbed down explanation for anyone who's uh, who might be clued up on pain science, but it's more or less you know, the spirit of things. If you are worried about something, you're scared of something, you're anxious about something in regards to pain, it can sometimes make it worse. Now, obviously, when you are struggling with something, it is hard not to freak out. It is hard not to worry because it's scary. It's a real issue and it does hurt. (laughs) And I'm definitely not saying you're not in pain because you are. But what you want to do in these situations is try your best to not freak out to not let these emotions overcome overcome you and not let them add more into the mix than you need. So a few points that you probably want to uh, have a think about here is number one, communication during a flare-up, whether it's to a close friend or a close family member, whether it's to an exercise professional as in your physio or as in um, you know podiatrist or whatever it may be or your coach or whoever it may be, but communication and talking about the issue can 100% help. Now, usually if you can talk to someone who is a professional in the field, they can give you a valid opinion and they can sort of take your doubts and your concerns and your worries and give you some really clear direction. That is worth its weight in gold. Not even talking about what they may actually say, not even talking about the techniques or strategies they may point you, to point, point you towards, but the pure act of having someone listen to you having someone take on board your issues and having someone reassure you and give you a plan of attack, that in itself has been very much proven to be incredibly effective at pain reduction, regardless of what they actually offer you. Now, that is a really, really weird thing to wrap your head around, but it is the truth. Communication helps. So when you have a flare-up, don't keep it to yourself. Have someone in your corner who you can trust. Have someone you can lean on and pass that pass that on and get some help there. On top of that is you want to do everything you can to remind yourself this is just a flare-up. As in you haven't damaged yourself unless you've had like 
um, an acute incident where you've had a trip or a stum- stumble or a fall. Maybe you've like felt like a hamstring snap or something like that. If it's just a flare up in the sense you've done a bit extra walking and your knee's uncomfortable or your foot's uncomfortable and you're like, oh man, I'm in pain again. More than likely, it is just a flare up. And what you need to do is remind yourself that this has happened before, that you haven't fallen apart, that you've gotten back to doing what you love, and it is going to pass in a few days. And you really do need to remind yourself with this. Now, for me, with my clients, I try to get them to write themselves a little note right after a flare up. So when something goes bad and they bounce back after a week or so, I want them, I try to get them to write themselves a note to them in the future. So when they do have a flare up, they can look back, they can read the note and it'll be like, hey, Rowan, look, right now you're struggling, right now you're freaking out because I was here, but just know in five, six, seven days, it'll pass. You're not broken. This is not going to be you forever. And having that note and having that reassurance from yourself can really, really help things. And that definitely can help you stop freaking out. So that's another really, really important thing. Now, on top of that, during this time, you want to do what you can to manage the pain as well as speed up the recovery. So everyone, everyone's got different pain relief techniques, which they may be comfortable with, whether it's icing, whether it's heat, whether it's elevation, whether it's compression, whether it's painkillers or whatever it may be. And this episode is not to dive into the specifics of that, of what's better, what's worse. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever relieves pain, you know, the body generally knows what it likes and start that. Don't hold off on pain relief techniques. Don't wallow in your misery. Try to get on top of it. Try to relieve discomfort as much as you can. And once that is feeling a little bit better, then you want to think about what can you do to speed up recovery? What can you do to enhance this recovery process? Have you been to a physio in the past and they've given you some stretches, given you some mobilizations to work with? Have you done things in the past? Um, you know, have you gone for a walk in a pool? Have you used compression stuff? Have you done particular exercises and it's given relief? Whatever it may be, do those things. If it's worked in the past or if a physio or someone's recommended to you, do them, have them available, work them out, put them into action. Because in this time, it's so easy just to wallow in our misery, think everything's broken, think everything's bad, and then just wait until it gets better. But if we can speed up the process, even the tiniest percentage, it's going to make a massive difference to your mindset. And obviously, you're going to bounce back quicker and get on the, into your training, onto the trail or doing whatever you love as quickly as you can. And then once you sort of start feeling a bit better, you're feeling confident to try out your training, just be smart with it. Adjust your training. Take out anything that you're not 100% confident with right now, with right now. If you've been doing stuff with weights and you're not, you know, 100% sure about that, just do some body weight stuff. If there were particularly aggravating exercises uh, that you were doing, don't do them. Choose low impact exercises and slowly ease yourself in. Because nine times out of 10, once you're through those initial stages of a flare up, easing yourself into training, getting moving again, it's going to be so good mentally. And it could potentially, if you do it right, it can speed up recovery if you're not aggravating yourself again. So sit down, be smart, change your training as necessary and ease yourself in. And then obviously, if it does hang around or if you think it is a bit more of an issue than just a flare up, if you do think there's something wrong in there, 100% go and see a physio, go and see a podiatrist or whatever exercise professionals in your corner and, you know, get a diagnosis, get some treatment or whatever it may be. But if you do find yourself in this situation where you do have pain flaring up after a hike, after a training session, whatever it may be, please, 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 please try not to freak out because try not to focus on it. Try not to get scared. Try to manage those emotions. It's tough. It's hard. It's very, very difficult, but it is important. And over the long term, when you're dealing with long-term pain, whether it's months or years or whatever it may be, learning these strategies and teaching yourself not to freak out and it's all part of the process and it is a normal thing, it does really, really pay dividends. So for any hiker who's been listening to this who does struggle with long-term pain and they are you know, regularly struggling with flare-ups, write this down. Don't freak out. Put strategies in place to, uh, to, deal, uh, to be proactive in these flare-ups. Put strategies in place to get the help you need and it will really serve you well. So I do hope you got a little bit out of this today, guys. I hope it gives you a little bit of food for thought 
And because when it comes down to long-term pain and chronic pain or whatever it may be, it is a very, very complicated subject. There's a lot of factors go into it. And this may give you one extra factor and one extra area to actually have a think about. So thank you so much for listening today, guys. If you do have any questions off this, you want to learn a little bit more, please do come and find me in the Training for Hiking and Trekking Facebook group. I'm always happy to expand on things, always happy to go a little bit deeper and always happy to add to anyone's questions around these episodes or just training for hiking in general. So it's the training for hiking and trekking group. I'll leave a link in the show notes below and you can check it out. But thank you so much for listening today, guys. Have a good one and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.